in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple more examples of using the limit comparison test. And so we have this series, n equals 1 to infinity, n squared over n to the fifth plus 2n minus 1. First step, we're going to find a series to compare it to. Right? And that's actually pretty easy because we just look at the dominant terms in the numerator and denominator. And so we can say that this compares to n equals 1 to infinity n square over n to the fifth. Um, and then if we simplify that, that's going to be n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. All right. Um, so that's the first thing. All right. So this is our b sub n series. So step one, find a series to compare it to. Step two, what is the behavior of the series? OK, well, if we look at the compared series, excuse me, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed is a p series, Okay, where p is equal to 3. All right, And so 3, obviously, greater than 1, which means that this is convergent. Okay, so convergent. All right. Now, the last thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the, the limit of the ratios. Okay, now remember, this is our a sub n, and this is going to be our b sub n. And we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n. All right, and this is going to look a little messy as we start. So this is now going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of n square divided by n to the fifth plus 2n minus 1. And we're going to divide all of that by 1 over n cubed. All right, so that's our a sub n over b sub n. Now, the good news is when we simplify this a little bit, it's not going to be too bad. Okay, so that should be a cube there. Sorry, the screen's not cooperating with me too well. All right, there we go. All right, so um, just like we did before, I think I'll quit on this. I'm going to try one more time. And if it doesn't look like a three, then I'm just going to write the word three out there. That's good enough. Um, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And so this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared times n cubed. OK, so we just multiply by the reciprocal n to the fifth plus 2n minus 1, which is going to be the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the fifth over n to the fifth plus 2n minus 1. And then we're going to divide everything by the highest power of n in the denominator, which is n to the fifth. So this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the fifth over n to the fifth divided by n to the fifth over n to the fifth plus 2n over n to the fifth minus 1 over n to the fifth. We simplify, and that's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator, 2 over n to the fourth minus 1 over n to the fifth. And now we can go ahead and apply our limit laws. And we know that anything with an n in the denominator is going to go to 0. So this goes to 0, this goes to 0. So that's going to be equal to 1 over 1, which by multivariable calculus methods is going to be 1. 1 is a real number, and 1 is greater than 0. All right, so going all the way back, remember, we got a convergent compared series. And then the limits of the ratios were a real number that's greater than 0. OK, so since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n was equal to 1, which is a real number, and 1 is greater than 0, n, the series b sub n, converges, which we just showed, OK? Then the original series, which was n equals 1 to infinity of n squared divided by n to the fifth plus 2n minus 1 converges. Okay, all right. 
So that's how we can utilize our limit comparison test. Okay, so again, three steps. First of all, compare. Secondly, determine the convergence or divergence of the compared series. And then finally, you do all the nasty calculus stuff. So the two examples we've seen so far, they both converge. Okay, let's look at an example for where we might have a divergence series. Okay, so we have this series, n equals one to infinity, five over seven n plus the square root of n. All right now, when we compare this, we only look at dominant terms. Okay, so this is n equals one to infinity. Um, the five really doesn't matter. We're just going to turn that into a one. Right? And then we know that the square root of n is n to the one half power. And then we have seven n, which is seven n to the first. So really, that's going to be our compared series, okay? Because the n is bigger than the n to the one half, okay? So that's part one. Part two, we're going to take a look at this series, n equals one to infinity of one over n, and we're going to determine the behavior of this. This is the harmonic series, as we saw in the previous section, or a p series with p equals one. So this is harmonic. This is the harmonic series and diverges. Make that try to look like harmonic. Sorry, it's difficult to write on the screen sometimes. So this is the harmonic series, and so it diverges. All right, so now all we need to do is show that the ratio of a sub n to b sub n is a real number, and we are going to be able to show that the original series is diverging. Now remember, this is a sub n, and this is b sub n, okay? So for part three, we are now going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n, which is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of five over seven n, and I'm just gonna make the square root of n into n to the one half immediately, divided by one over n. And then this is pretty easy at this point. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we get 5n divided by 7n plus n to the 1 half. We're going to divide by the highest power of n in the denominator, which is just n to the first. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 5n over n divided by 7n over n plus n to the one half over n. We simplify that. And now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of five over seven plus one over n to the one half. Okay, so we just subtract. Now we apply the limit law as we've seen countless times, seemingly countless. Um, that was going to go to zero. And so we're left with five sevenths. And unless earth shattering news has made five sevenths a non-real value. Um, five sevenths is a real number and five sevenths is larger than zero. And so that means that the original series follows the behavior of the compared series, okay? So finally, we're gonna say since the limit as N approaches infinity of A sub N divided by B sub N, is equal to five sevenths, which is a real number, and five sevenths is greater than zero, and b sub n diverges. This means that the series n equals, I think it was one to infinity, yep, of five over seven n plus the square root of n diverges as well. Okay, so that's our limit comparison test, okay? The limit comparison test to me is a little more powerful because we don't have to worry about that first condition um, that, the, that the general comparison test suggests where we have to compare the terms in the sequence, all right? However, um, it is a little bit more work to do because of the limit calculus that we have to employ here.
All right, so um, just as kind of a wrap up of all the different tests that we've seen so far, and again, um, I'm urging students to make a tape, like a, a list of these sorts of tests. Um, so that way, you know, you have the tests and you also have the conditions. Okay, so we had geometric series. Okay, um, we had the collapsing or the telescoping. Um, and then we had our test for divergence. Okay. We had a P series. We had an integral test. Okay. Um, and then in this series, we had two more tests. We had the general comparison test and we had the limit comparison. Okay, so a suggestion would be to go back and make sure that you write down all the basic stuff about each of these on a single sheet of paper, okay? Um, and we still have three more series to go through um, before we're done with the tests for convergence or divergence. So in total, I mean, so far we have seven, um, or you know, we have seven of these, we're gonna get three more. So there's gonna be 10 total tests that we're gonna look at. Um, it's a lot of tests. So we wanna make sure that we have, you know, something in our grasp so that way we can see all of them at once, okay? All right, so in the next section, we're gonna start taking a look at one of our other sorts of tests, which I believe is going to be the alternating series test. And then we're gonna take a look at the ratio and root test to finish out.